Yan, I'm in my hometown Nanchang, in a place called Princeton's Pavilion. It is the landmark of Nanchang and one of the three great pavilions of southern China. Located on the east bank of the Gan River, overlooking the river, the pavilion was first built in early Tang Dynasty in the 7th century. It has been destroyed and rebuilt 29 times over its history. The design of the current version is based on the pavilion of the Song Dynasty in the 11th century. There is a very unique design of this pavilion. At first sight, it looks like a four-story pavilion, but actually it has seven floors. Between each main floor, there is a hidden floor. The hidden floor does not have balcony nor windows, so you can't find it from outside. In addition, the pavilion sits atop a 12-meter tall concrete platform. Because originally, the pavilion was built on ancient city wall, which was destroyed. When they rebuilt the pavilion, they built a platform to symbolize the ancient city wall. There are two more floors in the platform, so together this architecture has nine floors in total. It's not enough to just hang out at the pavilion during the day. At night, a show here takes me back to the Grand Tang Dynasty. was first built in Tang Dynasty by a prince called Li Yuanling, who was also known as Princeton. Princeton was not interested in politics. Instead, he loved extravagant parties. The pavilion was built to hold his parties. Historians say there is a sad reason behind Princeton's luxury lifestyle. It was related to his older brother, the famous Emperor Taizong of Tang Dynasty, Li Shimin. Speaking of Li Shimin, I had to introduce you to my favorite TV series when I was a teenager. Li Shimin founded the Tang Dynasty together with his father and brothers. But when his father became the emperor, he was not the crown prince. His older brother was. Both Li Shimin and the crown prince had their supporters, and both groups tried to eliminate each other. In a coup, Li Shimin killed the crown prince and another younger brother who sided with the crown prince. Here in the news, his father was in deep sorrow, but he couldn't change anything. Li Shimin's group had become so strong, he had no other choice but to name Li Shimin the new crown prince. Three months later, the old emperor abdicated. Li Shimin became the new emperor. He was known as the Emperor Taizong of Tang Dynasty. This all happened before Prince Tang was born. When Prince Tang was six years old, his father died. He was raised up by his older brother, Li Shimin. However, Prince Chang must have learned in some way the story of Li Shimin killing his two other brothers who he had never met. He must have been intimidated and was sick of politics in the royal family. He devoted his energy to arts and was most famous for his drawing of butterflies. This is the fifth floor of the pavilion. On the copper plates is the famous poem prefaced to Princeton's pavilion. It is this poem that made the pavilion a household name since Tang Dynasty. 
Twenty-two years after the building of Princeton's Pavilion, a young poet called Wang Bo was on his way to present-day northern Vietnam to visit his father. He encountered a grand banquet in Nanchang. A poem composing competition was held to celebrate the renovation of Princeton's Pavilion. The topic was the pavilion. The winner was actually predetermined to be the son-in-law of the governor, but the young poet did not know. He joined the competition, composed the preface to Princeton's Pavilion, stunned everyone, and became the ultimate winner. The most famous verses of preface to Princeton's Pavilion are: 落霞与孤鹜齐飞，秋水共长天一色。It describes the sunset scene of this river. I know you might not understand Chinese, but can you feel the rhythm? Da 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 da. Rhythm is a very important element in ancient Chinese poems, especially in Tang Dynasty. The evening glow parallels with a lonely bird to fly. The autumn water shares a scenic hue with the vast sky. This was what the poet saw at the pavilion during the sunset. During the day, the water blends with the endless blue sky. It's not easy to convey the beauty of a poem in another language, but I'll read the ending paragraph, citing the translation of Mr. Xu Yuancong, a genius translator of ancient Chinese poems, who is also from Nanchang, to give you a little taste of the poem. You can find his books on Amazon. By riverside towers Princeton's pavilion proud. No more ringing bells punctuate the dancers' refrain. At dawn, its painted beams bar the south flying cloud. At dusk, its uproot springs mingle with west hills' rain. Leisurely clouds hang over still waters all day long. The world and season change beneath a changeless sky. Where's the prince who once enjoyed here wine and song? Beyond the rills and silent rivers, still. The child preface to Princeton's pavilion was sad. Wang Bo expressed his sadness of unable to use his talent. His life also ended in a tragedy. He was drowned in the South China Sea not long after he left Nanchang before he reached Vietnam to see his father. He was buried in Nian Province in Vietnam. Sadly, his tomb and temple was destroyed by U.S. Air Force in 1972. Only this statue was saved by a local general. While the ancient star architectures give me an illusion of the Tang Dynasty, the skyscrapers draw me back to reality. Sixty-one years after building of Princeton's Pavilion, thirty-nine years after the composition of the preface to Princeton's Pavilion, in the year 714 A.D., a young man became the governor of Jiangzhou Prefecture, now Zhejiang, a city about 125 kilometers north to Nanchang. One day, he visited Nanchang for work purpose and fell in love with this place right away. He wished his three sons would live in Nanchang when they grew up, and they did move here. That's how my ancestor, one of the three sons, moved to this city 1,300 years ago. In next week's video, I'll take you to explore Nanchang, the city where my family have been living for more than a thousand years. I'll show you the old and the new. I'm Yan Yan. I love traveling and I love stories. I'll take you with me in my travel and tell you the stories happened in 5,000 years of Chinese history. Subscribe to my channel and I'll upload a video every Saturday. See you next week.